Hi, right, Curtis here. This is my Sur SL68 amplifier and it's time to change the power tubes. A few years ago I interviewed John Sur in the Tone Wizards book and on page 150 he makes reference that he felt that every guitar player should know how to set up their own guitar and buy as an amplifier. So this time around I figured that was something I needed to learn. I reached out to John and he gave me step-by-step -step instructions on how to buy as an amplifier and I'm going to use this video to show you how to do it and document each step. The first step is learning how to use your meter. Uh, in this case, I've got a digital meter here. There are uh, many that you can choose from. Uh, check your instruction manual on how to set it for volts DC. In this case, I turn it to here. And then before you start working with lethal voltages in a guitar amplifier, is learn how to check the, the voltage on a 9 volt battery. Okay, so I'm going to just touch the probes. There you go, 9 volts. And it may, you know, depending on how new the battery is uh, or what have you, you're going to get some variance higher and lower. Then, if you want to practice using the probes, you can do that, where you essentially uh, just clip these like that. And then your hands free to be able to make the uh, bias adjustments. So once you have that down, uh, let's move to the next step. Okay, this is inside the SL68. I have all the volumes set to zero, including the master volume, and I have a load attached to the amplifier. You'll notice here that the high and low bias recommended settings are listed in volts DC. If you want millivolts to match your meter, then just multiply that by a, a thousand. So you'd have 34 for the high bias and a 45 for the low bias. What you want to find on these tube sockets are these uh, one meg resistors. And they can be tan or they can be black, uh, according to John. And so, uh, as you'll see, I've at already attached a test lead there on one and I've got the uh, other side of it to the ground. The one half of the resistor is attached to the tube socket and the other one goes to ground. And that goes over here to uh, a multimeter. So you can see uh, uh, that tube there is, is hovering right around 45. Now even in a matched set you're going to have some variance between all four of them. It's not all going to line up at, at 45 for that. So um, uh, I'll change to the other one. So you saw that one is at 45.5. I'm going to change to the next one. And it goes down a little bit. So um, uh, according to John, you can have uh, as much as 5 uh, millivolt uh, variance between all of those for it to be acceptable. So uh, depending, I've already adjusted it here, but the, over here on the circuit board are the two pots that you use, the, that you do the adjustment, and you can just use a small screwdriver like this to go in, and, and uh, it doesn't have to move a lot to, uh, to change it. So the top one there is for the low, and then, uh, then for the high. So I did the low first, I can then just switch to, to high, and then we'll notice here that, uh, that my goal is to get to, to uh, 34 on that. You can see that currently that's at 32, going climbing out 33 within reason. And I'll check the other one now. You can see that one's at about 37. That one's a little higher. So uh, I'll probably leave it right there. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you have to be very careful. This is all high voltage and can kill you. Um, that's why I'm using the clip leads there. Uh, you can uh, do it with, with just probes, but uh, it, it uh, is easier to just use the clips. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, for your own bias settings. Note, yeah, various amps are going to have different ways of doing it. Not all amplifiers have uh, this benefit of having this resistor uh, like John has here. So it makes it pretty straightforward. Good luck.